Welcome to the March 14th, 2024 Inspiring Author Conversations. I'm Kathy Davis and with Davis Creative Publishing, today we'll be speaking with Amanda Rose Igo about public speaking secrets that authors need to know to sell more books. Our theme for 2024 is growing your business by the book. And each month we welcome guests who inspire authors by sharing their knowledge, new ideas, opportunities, and wisdom. So help me welcome Amanda Rose Igo. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Correct. Bravo. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Amanda Rose is the speaking success strategist and award-winning speaker expert and best-selling author. She's taught thousands of step-by-step -step speaker training systems. These speakers are able to master masterfully book speaking engagements better that they can say that than me, magnetize their audience, monetize their message, and make an impact. She's been featured on CBS, NBC, Fox, and in the number one best-selling book series, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Amanda Rose is the author of Pain-Free Public Speaking and Share Your Story. The power of what Amanda Rose teaches has helped her clients from over 20 countries overcome their biggest speaking challenges and skyrocket their presentation results. Welcome. Welcome back, Amanda Rose. Thank you. I'm very yeah. glad to be here. We had Amanda Rose with us last fall, and Florida <laughs> was in the middle of what a small hurricane. Uh, just had, really bad rain. It was almost like a little hurricane <laughs> or a tropical yeah, storm. Connection. So we wanted to invite you back. <laughs> so tell us, how did you get involved in this whole um, arena, this whole car career of yours? Sure. Thanks for asking, Kathy. So for me, you know, I think if I believe fate puts us in places we don't expect, and that's exactly what, ha what happened to me. So I was a social worker and then I wanted to change. So I took a job with a nonprofit and they didn't tell me I'd literally have to stand in front of hundreds of people and present. I was a horrible communicator, as and ums, nervous laughter, uncomfortable in social situations. I'm like, could you have told me this before I said yes to this job? <laughs> But I like to say my mother didn't raise a quitter. So I could have quit the job or I could figure it out. And I figured it out. And then through the process of, of presenting for this company, I was getting accolades from board members telling me, you need to teach everyone to speak like you speak. I'm like, what? A horrible communicator, nervous laughter, and you're telling me I need to do this? And so at the same time I was doing personal development, and if you read personal development books, you attend a personal development seminar, you, can, you can't stay in the status quo. And so I just kept feeling this calling, like I was meant to start my own business. And here I am, probably 20 years this year. Wow. Yeah, this, I was downsized in December 2003, and I, we're in our 20th year, so we're on a similar path there. It was like I did not want to go back to corporate. So as you went out on your own, how did you, did the speaking gigs just kind of come to you or how, how does that, how does that happen? How did yeah, it so they, yeah, they didn't. And I had to go after them. And I think also too, a lot of people think they're just going to show up for them. And it really took an active approach. I mean, I literally had to find groups that I could present to contact the groups in order to be able to do that, make connections with people and so I actually discovered, you know, because it, it came fairly easy to me. I think there's a part of my mind that's very creative that creates, you know, fun content. But there's also a little analytical, like a step by step person. So I was like, oh, you got to do this and then you got to do this and you got to do this. And many years later, I helped a client write a signature talk and I said, OK, go book speak engagements. And she said, I don't know how to do that, Amanda Rose. Oh, it just came easy to me to do it. And so eventually I ended up creating a system to teach my clients how to do it. But you have to be, I had to be really proactive about it. And did it be, mean that I was going to get in front of hundreds of people immediately? No, it was just putting one foot in front of the other. And this was way before, because this is 20 years ago. This was way before Zoom. All right, so now we have all these virtual opportunities to present that we didn't have before. This was when... We used to do teleseminars. Anybody remember teleseminars? <laughs> Where you got on an audio teleconference line, right? You listen to a presenter. And so I remember a neighbor of mine saying, oh, you need to do a teleseminar. And I'm like, oh, no, I like live people. I want to be in front of people. And then when I did it, I'm like, wow, you can reach an international audience by doing something like that. 
And today, thank God for all of us, the, you know, there are so many options to be able to present in person and online. So not only do you, do you can you expand, you know, the opportunities that are in front of you, you expand your reach as well, because you can touch lives of international people. And that didn't happen initially when I started my business. What, I, sorry for my pause there. Um, we have a contractor coming and he said, I'm on my way. I said, oh, but you can't be because I'm on, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to wait. Um, so when, my apologies for having to take that distraction there. When you're working with your authors and, and your clients and they've never been in that speaking arena, how do you help them overcome that fear of mm -hmm. stepping into it? I know a, a lot of the authors that we work with are, you know, the timid, they just want to write and not really get noticed and ha let somebody help me write or I'll write it and you produce it and you promote it. How do you work with that kind of personality? I think it was very similar for my, like for myself in the beginning, because it was really uncomfortable for me. I didn't want to do this, but I was kind of, it was really my calling. And so every time in the beginning when I started to present, I really focused on why I was doing it, how I was being of service to people. And so if I go out and change one person's life as an audience, then my time is well spent. And so I really had to focus on that and take the focus off of myself. Because when we're having any fear, any trepidations about doing something, it's because we're thinking about us and that's okay. But if you take the focus away from yourself and put it onto the audience as far as they, they need this message, it's important for me to share this. This is gonna help somebody, it's gonna inspire somebody, it's gonna make them think differently. Whatever your motivation is, you then use that to push yourself forward. Because how many, how many of you would like to make a bigger difference in the lives of other people? Yeah. And so if you wanna make a bigger difference, right? Does it serve you to not do it, to at least get out there and maybe even get on some podcasts? Because speaking on podcasts is, is speaking too. And so just keep remembering that people need it. Well, and that message becomes all a part of your author platform and your author brand in that, you know, what is it you're, you're not really selling ink on paper. You're selling that message. People will buy your message before they buy your book. And if you have that, that message in your talk in your speech that you're giving them your, as you said, their, your goal as a speaker, if you're an author, also, if you're an author first, I'll say mm -hmm. is what can you do to help that audience that you're standing in front of, you know, what is it that they need that you can share? And that will be their biggest takeaway. That's right. That's right. If you have an inspiring story to share or implementable tips that they can apply into their life, you're changing their life. Mm -hmm. There is, I think it was Bob Proctor who said this. I'm, there is, I don't know if it was Bob Proctor, but somebody had said, I heard this story a long time ago. This person had prepared their entire presentation, practiced it, got it ready, went to present it, and there was no one in the room. No one. But he, this person delivered this presentation like there was an audience. And he was in an airport like a year later and somebody came up to him and said, thank you so much. I saw you at blah, blah, blah. And he said, you changed my life. He goes, but no one was in the audience. He goes, I was the janitor. And I've, I've utilized everything that you shared in my life is completely transformed. Audience of one, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I know and he didn't even know it was, it was yeah, one. Right, exactly. <laughs> I know we have some speakers, professional speakers here on the call with us today. Uh, and I love the fact, Richard, you mentioned, Richard Evdoyan mentioned, he also has an MSW. <laughs> and I, I love that. Richard, is be sure and raise your hand if there's anything you want to chime in on here, because I can kind of see it in your eyes. <laughs> there was a thought that went past earlier. Yeah. We have one. I do have a point. I I totally agree. You know, I, I, her story and my story are very similar, but I think a lot of it also has to do with recognizing that you're offering a gift. And, you know, one of the things when I first started on the circuit, the, the bottom line is you want everybody to love you. And the truth of it is not everybody has good taste or they're not ready 
for your message, but it doesn't demean the value of what the gift is that you're sharing with your audience. And I think people need, especially with speakers, we tend to want applause and we want everybody to get it. And we judge our value based on that. And that's really a place that's really not going to be healthy for you. And I, I, it, so that that's what I was thinking about. And what the topic of the book has a lot to do with, is it worthy of an audience to hear you talk about it. I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. So mm -hmm. I, I agree. And I, I'm somebody who really struggled with the concept of wanting everyone to love me. I was always trying to prove myself. And I remember being at one of my coaches events like 10 years ago and I'm, you know, she had a big stage and I thought to myself, wow, you know, look at her doing this. And she was very, she was not somebody who ran from ego based, right? So she was really being service to people. And I, I realized at that event, I said, I'm never going to succeed if I'm always trying to get people to love me. They may not like me because I have a weird name, Amanda Rose. Maybe they won't like my last name. Maybe they won't like me because I remind them of their sister Sue that they don't like. Who knows what somebody may not resonate with. They may not like the tone of my voice. So I let that go. And when I let that go, people seemed to resonate with me more because I was, they could tell I was being really authentically myself and not trying to be somebody else. And so when we, and as Richard said, when we let that go, you know, we can, we can be our, really our best version of ourselves because it's, it's an impossible task. It's not ever going to happen. Yeah. One of the other questions that I get a lot from authors where they feel uncomfortable is let's say they're giving a talk, they have a book and asking for that sale of the book. How, how do you incorporate that? How do you suggest authors, if you're speaking, uh, let people know maybe your book is in the back of the room or, or mm -hmm. all the way, because I've seen, seen them use it in a lot of different ways. So there's a couple. Yeah. So there are a couple of different ways is one, you could use your book during your presentation. I don't have a book on my table. I'll use this one. It's a little notepad, right? So mm -hmm. you can say like in chapter six, I talk about this and you hold it here near your face, right? Not down because you want it up. And then you could point out things that they can learn in the book. So that's a great way of, of seeding your book. And, let, and then also too, is you could put like a ticket or something under a chair and let per, one person win it, right? So what do people want? They want what they cannot get, <laughs> right? So you give one away. And then if you'd like to, if you didn't win it, there is a way for you to get the book today. And so then you let them know about the stuff. That's an easy ways to promote your book. In, in a subtle and not salesy way. Yeah. And then there's also the opportunity. Of, uh, I've been in large rooms with 100, 200 people, and they may have a table at the back, and they may have an assistant standing at the back with that table. Mm -hmm. And then what's a good way to make to direct people back there, but yet keep their attention on you? So you were going to direct them back there at, at your closing, so it's, you're going to really focus on that or even just, it's okay to point them back there and say, you know, turn around there, say hi to Sue back there, everybody say hi Sue or hi Tom. And then you let them know where to go. It's in your closing. So you're going to be wrapping up your presentation anyway, when you do that. And so it's, it's really easy to kind of just direct them and be very clear about the action steps. Don't say, oh, over there. No, tell them exactly where to go because a confused mind doesn't take action. So give them really super clear steps. Yeah. And I will share with you something that, um, and if anybody has a program that you offer. So I did a long time ago, I presented in front of a woman's group and I had my book, one of my first book, and I had my workshop. Mm -hmm. And so most people bought the book, which is great for authors, but I wanted also most people to buy the workshop because it was a higher ticket item. Right. So what I started to do was include the book with the workshop, right? So they got something very tangible that they could access right now. And so what do you think happened to my workshop sales? It went up, but I also put a personalized autograph note in with every book. So they got something that, you know, I would put something different in everybody's book. You know, you're like, you're meant to shine your light, Amanda Rose, you know, don't give up on your speaking dreams, whatever I felt to right to, to put in each person's book is what I wrote, but letting people loved autograph copies of things, especially personal notes. Mm -hmm. Richard has a couple of great comments. 
um, a suggestion that you, one, we want to first ask if we can sell from the platform for that particular. Yeah, you have to ask in advance before you speak anywhere, for sure. And then another way um, that he's seen the, the book used is gift a book to random people to ask a question or answer that question first. Uh, true people want. What Richard? other? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. What I, said, I, meant, I type poorly. It's gifting mm -hmm. a book. If you have a question, you throw out a question, the first mm -hmm. person who answers, you give them a book or a yeah. person who asks a very prominent question, give them a book because people, as she mentioned, people like and want what others got. And then you can sell them in the back of the room because people want to go home with part of you, the speaker. So, the, it, but asking for permission, because a lot of my contracts, and I think she would know this as well. A lot of mm -hmm. contracts when I'm speaking, they say you cannot sell from the platform. Mm -hmm. So th there are some that are very strict about that, but you can reference in my book. I do expound on this without showing the book, you know, without saying I'm page 14, I'm doing this but making reference to the book without showing the book. I mean, it's it's a type rope walking place nowadays with selling from the platform. You know, it's tough. Yeah. It's, if they're paying you, right? So if they're paying you, then you can include a certain number of books or you right. can, right? And, or, or you could say any book pre right. proceeds, you know, you could just include it in your contract that you're going to sell the books or, or you're going to include a certain number of books. When you're pay being paid to speak, yes. If you're doing a complimentary presentation, it's much easier to say, hey, I'm gonna give away a book. You know, would you like me to do that? Oh yeah, yeah. And can I just tell them to easily just go see Sue or Tom in the back, you know, if they would like to purchase it. That's re a really easy conversation and it's never comes across as a hard sale. So those complimentary presentations are more likely to do it for sure. Yeah, so overall, is there, as an author, do I have to go out and speak? What's the benefit for me for going out and speaking? So it helps you sell your books. It, it's it's really about credibility too. So for example, if it's it's all mark, think of it as marketing, right? So your market oh, I just had something fall off my my footstool and it fell off. <laughs> so um, it's. It helps you market. So if you're saying, oh, I've spoken at eWoman Network or the Rodeo Club or any of that, what happens to your credibility? It goes up, right? It's a credibility that you can, in, you can announce and you can include in your marketing around your book as well. So if you, for example, you take um, you know, a photo of like your book and there's a stage behind you, right? What happens to your credibility? Goes up. You take a photo with somebody that was in your audience, right? And they've got a copy of your book. Credibility goes up. Yeah. And especially if you're an expert, um, if you're if you're wanting to position yourself as a as an expert in your field, there's a lot of people out there that do a lot of the same stuff that a lot of us do. And you know, how do you get yourself to stand out? More than likely, that's the main reason why you've written this book is to help promote, use it as a marketing tool to help promote your business and help you grow your business. You know, that's, that's the main goal here. Um, just, Agreed. For, just for a second. So Amanda Rose knows if you could raise your hand either electronically or literally, if you have a book already. Yeah, I know. Kim, you've got one. Yep. Yeah. So at least half. And I know a couple of people that are not on the visual also have. So awesome. Perfect. Yeah. So we've got quite a few here today that have, have their own books. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. A draft does count almost. Chuck. Almost. Yeah. It's close. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. The, um, If you, or is there a particular type of industry or type of book that works best on a, on a speaker circuit? Yep. So there is, but I'm, I'm going to be conscious of saying this. So when it's a strategy book and types where it's very, there's hard, like hard versus soft, right? So there's the hard topics, which is strategy speaking would fall into that topic as well. And then you have your soft topics, which are your personal development, mindset, spirituality, things like that. 
And so, yes, will things that are in the hard topics get a little bit more opportunities? Yes, because they're very, very concrete. And then you have your mind system. But I was just talking to somebody yesterday who said that, oh, somebody told me it's going to be really hard for me to get speaking opportunities in there were in the mindset realm. I said, listen, somebody that I just helped just doubled what they made and they sold their platinum program, which was double what they were getting paid before. And she's got, she said she's going to San Diego and from San Diego, she's going to Chicago the next day. So that's really about oh, yeah. how and you position up, yourself. Yeah, that brings up a great topic in that it's not about standing up, telling your story and expecting your book to sell. As you mentioned earlier, you packaged your book with your program. And a lot of it is developing that program. Is that something you help speakers and authors do? so that they know mm -hmm. how, how to work. How does all that work? Where do you start in helping someone new to this develop that program? Sure, so for me, I work with my clients in four pillars, which is the signature talk, because everyone, as Richard knows, you need a signature talk. It's not just going up and having your book and reading pieces of your book. It's really about audience engagement, grabbing them from the moment you open your mouth, giving valuable nuggets so that they continue to want more, having a strong closing, your story, all those pieces that go into a signature talk that you can do over and over again and repurpose for podcasts, for videos, as well as live stages. Then we also work on all their messaging from speaker one sheets. And if you're at a higher level, media kits, it just depends on where your level is at speaking, all your speaker power bio, your presentation descriptions, title, tagline, all those pieces, mm -hmm. your delivery, because most people don't realize <laughs> that your delivery is so important. Women, we tilt. What is that? <laughs> Why do we tilt? We lean on one leg, we close our fists, men do the fig leaf right in front of their private parts and put hands in pockets. We do crazy things with our body language, which takes away from our stage presence. And then the last piece is actually how to book speak engagements from A to Z, whether it's podcasts, live stages, it's, it covers really any aspect of what somebody wants to do. How much of a difference in what you're training and teaching people between online versus in person? If someone's mm -hmm. this, do you recommend one or the other? No, I think you want to do both. Most people, most, um, mm. I'm actually going to re I'm going to say, I'm going to reframe this though, because I, in the past, most people would have said, I want live in person. But I think since the pandemic, we've been so comfortable sitting in our pants, <laughs> putting a nice top on, right? And wearing shorts or yoga pants or jeans on the bottom that we get really comfortable doing the virtual sides of things. So I would say most people do want both of those. When I've asked people, you know, which do you prefer? Most people said live stages, but then many people lately have said both. They want to do both of them. Well, and, and as you were speaking earlier and you held up your notebook, I thought, so like if I hold up my notebook, I'm on the reverse side. And so this is flipped for anybody that might want to read the front of this book. And that that's one of the things if you're doing it online is to make sure that your mirror is off, I guess. It actually was perfect for us. Oh, was it? Yeah, you see it backwards. We I don't. See, oh, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Little did I know. So the books. I know. Yeah. yeah. I've done that too, where I've helped, had things and people are like, no, flip it. Because <laughs> I thought I was doing the right thing. That's and good. I was wrong. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. I learned my lesson for the day. That's that's worth me being here today. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what your Zoom setting is. You have Zoom where it says mirror. You can do it where it mirrors you. Exactly, because mm -hmm. I never know when I'm going to fix my hair, which side yeah. of hair it is. But if you don't touch that setting, then whatever you pick up, you'll be able to see it. We'll see it exactly as you want us to see it. Terrific. And then what I also noticed when you were holding up your notebook is that you held it by your head so that, mm -hmm. you know, people can automatically see you and see your book and relate the two together. Whereas if you're in person, you know, you may hold it further out here or closer to the audience. No, actually always nope. here. Always. Always up. here. Because what you want it's them enough. to make the connection between you mm -hmm. and the book. And so if you go and you hold it out far, where does their attention go? It's kind of like it slides. Follows the book. Yeah. Right. So I teach my clients, you know, and lots of people like to rely on slides. But every time you click on a slide, where does their attention go? 
to the yeah. slide and you disconnect it. So you want them to stay, create all your visuals so you stay in this frame so they're always connected with you. So I want to remind everybody, if you do have a question, please raise your hand either electronically or, or at, we have a small enough group, I can see everybody on one screen, or make sure you type that into the chat and we'll make sure we get that answered. Richard, please jump in. Now, I do have a question. Uh, if you have what multiple books, one of the things that I'm struggling with is it's easy to talk on all of the books, but if you really want to brand yourself as an expert, you need... I. I believe, and I'm questioning, I'm asking, is it more logical to really focus most of the speaking about the primary book that you really want to be branded as an expert in, as opposed to other supportive books you may have also bought, wrote? That's right. Yeah, you're hundred percent. You really do want to have it to be the focus. You know, maybe it's the, maybe it's the latest book that you came out with, you know, and that's your, your latest message. Okay. And so it's really what book do you want highlighted? And if there's one that is the foundation of the work that you do, right? That's the thing that most people purchase, most people are excited about, then go with that. The yeah. others just add to your, you know, your Probably. library of all the books that you've done. Yeah. Okay, awesome. thanks. Suzanne? Yes. Um, my question is, uh, like, I, I kind of didn't understand this whole author thing and how you had to sell your books by speaking. And it's really another business. You know, like I had an inspired word from the Lord and, and a poem and I wrote a book and I guess I just thought somehow I would publish it and it would just go, whoo, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> how somehow that would just spread. So I have been learning some different things along the way. Um, but what I see now is so many people out there doing what you're saying, speaking, Zooms, whatever. Like, I mean, I walked through the airport the other day and there were four people on Zoom, on podcasts, you know, it's like we're in a sea of that, you know, mm -hmm. to say that. So I was saying, like, how do you even really know as a person seeing all this, who's really credible, you know, like who, you know, you is there, is there something I know, like if you have degrees and you can throw those titles out or whatever you do, but what makes you be able to talk about something if you don't have all that, you know, you know, what, how does that work? And do people just kind of begin to look at this as all oh, like, it's just another person. I mean, you can get invited to be on any podcast. I mean, people just are hungry for people to be on a podcast for you, you know, so like, I don't know, I guess that's my question is like, how do you know where to spend, best spend your time and, or how do you make yourself credible to, you know, even be going out or, or advertising yourself? Mm -hmm. So you, first of all, you want to spend your time where you think you, you're going to get the most bang for your buck, let's just say in time, right? So where can you get the most exposure for your, for your book? So for example, a podcast, do you want to start with somebody who's brand new? Not unless they're really well known, because they're not going to get the traction that you want for your book. Yeah. So you have to do your due diligence. I don't take every opportunity that shows up for me because I have a very tight schedule. And so if I have a very tight schedule, I can only do so many things and I have to be really smart with my time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is when I first started my business 20 years ago, I said to my coach, I need a certificate. And she said, she wrote out a piece of paper and said, here's your certificate. That's a mindset piece. It's the thing that, oh, I need to do one more thing before I can. Mm -hmm. And you have to let that go. It won't serve you. Listen, I've done lots of trainings and I've done lots of things. I have a great a credibility in my business for what I've accomplished. Only one time did anybody ask me, what trainings did you attend? One time in 20 years. So it's really only our belief system. They're gonna, if you present yourself in a certain way and everything being credible, and I'm gonna give you a tip all that you can use right away if you're brand new in a <laughs> second. If you present yourself as credible, you're, if you're an author, you already have credibility. If you've been on a few podcasts, you're, you already have credibility. So you're gaining that. It's what you put in that speaker one sheet or that podcast sheet that matters, right? How professional does it look? It should not be a Word document. Go into Canva and create something that looks very professional. Anyone can do it these days. 
And the other thing is if you're brand new, what you can say in your bio, your speaker bio or podcast bio, you can say, I'm going to say speaker bio because it's where it works for speakers. Whether, let's say, whether Suzanne is presenting to a group of 20 or, or 500, she does what? You know, and it's really about your energy as a speaker. We didn't say that Suzanne spoke in front of 20 or 1,000 or 500. It's, it's in the intention of the words there about her energy. So I'm going to say that again. When Suzanne speaks to, whether Suzanne's speaking to a group of 20 or 500, she, and that kind of the she's part is like how you deliver your talk and stuff like that. It's not saying that you've ever done it, but what is the reader, how is the other person receiving it? Oh, she's done it. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you just have smart languaging, but always be truthful. And then you can just language sometimes of um, things like that, that work really well for new people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Nina had a question regarding social media, um, TikTok, Instagram. How to is that something to use to help promote your book or talks? So I'm not a social media expert, but yes, it needs to be out there. You have to, hundred percent. And I'm sure Kathy can share more about that. You have to be able to use social media platforms to be able to present your books. As I was talking about, right? If you're presenting, if you're speaking somewhere. Take your book, right? And a photo, somebody else has their book in your hand, you take a photo with them. It's just more visuals. And people do a lot of, you know, like free, like I'm giving it away for a day for free. So they tell everybody's friends the ebook versions of things and that helps get you more exposure. But yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you do for sure. Well, and even Richard, you mentioned that you're getting ready to do a, a Barnes and Noble book signing and there may be someone that walks through that store on that day that w wants you to come and speak to their group i mean i've seen it just organically happen and which barnes and noble are you going to be at i can't hear you uh fairview heights illinois okay. actually I, I suggested the most recent book that you've done for me and he said richard do all three he said, I'll, and what surprised me, he offered to order the books. Most of the Barnes and Nobles that I've talked to colleagues, they've had their own supply right. that they take. He said, no, 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 don't worry about it. I'll, I'll order the books. I'll just give me all three ISBN numbers and I'll order the books. So I'm shocked. So well, and that's, yeah, that's the key there from a publishing standpoint is you have to make sure that your book is being distributed so that Barnes and Noble has access to it. And every author that runs through our programs. I, I just want to one more thing is a funny thing. And I hope she enjoys yeah. it a well, while is I said to him, his name's Cody. I said, Cody, I know professional colleagues of mine who have taken their book and just slipped them on the, Yes. on the shelf of Barnes and Noble. We've heard that story. And he said, Richard, please do not do that. He said, that screws up our whole system because we don't have, even though you have the ISBN number on the book, it throws us off mm -hmm. and we will get angry. And I said, I'm glad you told me that. I said, I wouldn't <laughs> do it. I'm not that gutsy. But so I'm telling people out there, don't do that. <laughs> you'll, you'll have, I know who you're referring to and you'll have to tell that person that more than likely that book got thrown out. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause they can't, they can't process it. No, yeah. no, he could process it. No, that wasn't the issue. The person took it to the cashier and they yeah. put in the IBS. No, they sold it, but it screwed up their whole system because yeah. they had to go and okay. check it all down. It was not in their inventory. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Amazing. James. You have to unmute yourself. Uh, lower left of your screen, there's a microphone that probably has a red line through it. Run your mouse over that and click on that. There, there we go. Okay. Uh, yes. I am an ex-police officer, and I have taught uh, uh, police officers all over the United States. But I'm, everything I do, of course, has been technical as far as uh, forensics and everything like that. I have a kind of a uh, 
Well, my agenda, of course, is laid out technically. Now I have just written a what, fictional uh, murder mystery. I've never done anything like this before. Do you have a particular agenda when you're talking to somebody, an order of how you make your presentation, how you make your presentation? Mm -hmm. And so are you going out and speaking on the, on the fiction book? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so, so give me a little bit for more information about your question. How you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, just go ahead. How you, just give me a little bit more information on your question. Okay. I, uh, I, I've, I'm public speaking. That's fine. I've got no problem with that. And I've, mm -hmm. I've done a lot of that with the teaching and uh, doing some seminars myself, but that has been on technical uh, aspects uh, and maybe the Q and a, if I go out to do a, a book signing someplace and I'm going to, uh, uh, hawk my, my, my book, do you have a particular order? How you make your, uh, your presentation? I don't get that. Yeah. So is it the actual presentation that you're doing for the book signing? Is that what you're saying, James? Like when you go yes. and deliver yes. your presentation, signing? You know, I work with mostly nonfiction, so it's a little bit easier to work on the content pieces of it. And so I don't, I don't have an answer for you. And I, I can certainly kind of, is, I it could be part of what I might be hearing is one, you need to know who your audience is mm -hmm. that you're going to speak to. And yep. then you want to target audiences that would be interested in hearing what your book is about. And I'd, I'd be happy to talk with you, James. I think we've got a call coming up and we can I can help you brainstorm on some ways and narrow down that question a little bit for you and help you figure out what the next step would be. Thank you. Sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I'd want to remind everybody, if you do have any last minute questions, drop them in. We're, we're getting close to the end of our session today. Um, so Amanda Rose, I understand that you have a gift for the audience today. I do. <laughs> it's been a while, Kathy. So yeah, I know. And I'd right. be happy to be reminded of what that is. <laughs> so well, so if, you would, if you would like a strategy session with me on my website, it's 15 minutes. I'm happy to give you the, a full 30 minute strategy session. And so we can talk about your speaking goals, what your challenges are, we'll create a clear plan for what you can do to change it. And then not during that time, but if we want to talk further, we'll continue the conversation, but it's not a, a sales call, but it's really a call to talk about, okay, I have this, I'm thinking about doing this with my speaking, this is where I'm getting stuck, or I tried this, this isn't working, so we can really kind of brainstorm on what's happening with your speaking. I love that. And those links that you're referring to, we'll add those when we send out the link to the recording and we'll add your contact information so they know how to reach out to you. Beautiful. That would be great. So if you were to offer any last words of wisdom for this particular hour today, what would that be for authors wanting to enter into that speaking realm? Yep. So I would recommend that you take whatever next step you feel that you want to take. So lots of times people think, oh, well, I have to get it right. You don't have to get it right. And that's the key. Sometimes the lessons that we learn from taking that next step are just as important as the right steps that we take. So you might find that you go and you reach out to something and they, and they say no because of whatever reason. Then look at it and say, okay, what worked really well about this and what could I change? Like learn from every experience that you're having. It's never a failure because Kathy can tell you, Richard can tell you, I can tell you lots of doors get closed or things don't go the way that we planned. It's what we do with that situation that matters the most. So we'll look at it as what was effective and what was ineffective. And what can I change and do it a little bit differently? And as Richard mentions, um, you can also hire a speech coach. Um, is that something that you include? A speaking yes. coach? 
Okay. Yep. So we work on your talk. We work on all, if you want to, it's either just be your talk that we work on, or you can work on your talk and how to book speak engagements as well. As well as the delivery itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Because okay. a talk is a talk, you know, so the things that lots of times, I know their AI was mentioned in the chat, which I think AI is a powerful tool, but it's your personal message. AI isn't you, right? It can never be you. It doesn't have your flavor, your story, the way that you say things. And so, yes, it can help you, but it can't really put that, that finesse to it that really lands with you and how you speak and share things. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, we, we have a specific AI policy. So, you know, we can use it for research for our books, but we just want to rewrite it so it sounds like you. And that it's important. Right. That, you know, your yeah. information is your wisdom that gets out there. Yeah. That's right. And two, if you put a signature talk, like you read a presentation, we call them signature talks because it's your signature and it's a talk because it's a conversation with an audience rather than a speech where you're talking at them. Once you put that information into AI, the AI now has it. You don't own it anymore. Your intellectual property is now shared in the AI field. And so you really want to be conscious of what you put there as well. That's it. Extra pearl of wisdom there. Thank you so much. Welcome. Yeah. I want to thank you again for being here for round two and the storms left us alone this time. I greatly appreciate the, the storm gods making that happen or not <laughs> happen, I should say. And remember to be watching for our follow-up email with information on how to connect with Amanda Rose and register for her brainstorming session. We will yeah. see you next month, April 11th. We'll be talking with Danielle Brown about video marketing magic for authors. That's Thursday, April 11th at 1130. And you'll get information about how to register for that. I greatly appreciate all of you being here today. Amanda Rose, thank you so much. And your information will go out. Um, if not Friday, it'll be Monday. So I appreciate everybody so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine. <laughs>